Well, sorry about the delay. We ran out of programs, so I had to go print a bunch more for you tonight. So uh, that's what I've been doing for the last five minutes. Welcome this evening to the chapel in Marlboro. It's good to see you. I recognize many faces, of course, uh, if you attend church here. Hopefully, uh, you're welcome and feel comfortable. If not, we're in your guest this evening. We're glad to have you here as well. This program this evening uh, is a lot of hard work by a lot of different people over the course of the last three months or so, and uh, we're very excited to present it to you this evening. Uh, just a few things, briefly. Uh, everyone pretty much has one of these now, okay? Um, if you don't know how to turn it off or silence it, find someone next to you that does, okay? So that they can help you out with this, because it's not that it'll bother us so much. It really won't. I won't be that conductor that turns and, you know, stops the concert until you turn your phone off. You may or may not have heard about that, but someone actually did that. So I won't be that guy, but uh, you will feel really embarrassed. You'll feel really embarrassed if your phone goes off on you in the middle of this thing tonight. And uh, there's, there's nothing I can do to help you with that if that happens. So go ahead and pull that out, silence that, turn it off. Just do that right now, and you'll save, save, save yourself some uh, confusion and frustration later. If you are a guest to our facility and you've been wandering around trying to find where the bathrooms are, I'll tell you right now, it's real simple. They're just right outside this hallway, okay? Uh, we're going to have courtesy lights on for you throughout this evening's presentation. So if for some reason you do need to leave and go to the restroom, they're just right here. Also this evening, we have available for you a nursery that is uh, staffed with our regular nursery workers for children three years of age and younger, children three years of age and younger. So if your child is just not quite into this whole thing and needs to take a break, you can go ahead and just come down this hallway and then there's another one and then on the left. It's where all the screaming and yelling and fun times will be happening, okay? So if you can't find it, and I guarantee you that one of the persons screaming will be my daughter, not because she's upset, but because she just loves the nursery. So. I assure you that uh, all is well if you hear a little girl going ah! at some point. Uh, it's, it's okay. So hopefully you'll take advantage of that. If for some reason you're not comfortable with that, we do have a few TVs throughout our facility that uh, will be showing the, the program throughout the evening. There's one out here in, in our narthex. There's one down this way and there's one down uh, the other door that way as well. You can wander the halls and still be able to see some of what's going on. So we want to make sure that that's available to you. Well, once again, thank you for coming tonight. Uh, we're looking forward to the second presentation this evening of And on Earth Peace. And I just ask that you bow with me in prayer now. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have to come together to sing your praise, to lift up your name, to do what you would have us to do, to learn about you, to recognize your inherent worth, to thank you for coming to be our Savior to lift you up in song, to recognize this time of year, not as necessarily the time that you actually were born, but the time that we take to set aside to recognize your place in our lives. Lord, I pray it would be more than just a concert this evening, but it would be an activity that you are worshiped in, that as a result of being here tonight, you are pleased that we here tonight can also participate fully, that you would be able to reach each one of us and change our lives and our hearts if that is needed, that we would be able to praise you for the great God that you are and what you have done for each one of us. We thank you for this opportunity tonight. I thank you for each person here and the work that's been put in. I pray all these things in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus. He became human and he lived among us. 
we saw his glory, the glory that belongs to the only Son of the Father, and he was full of grace and truth. Now awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead. The Messiah will shine on you. This baby in a manger, this word made flesh, his light will make all things visible. This is the story of the birth of the Prince of Peace. Spirit in the heavens, baby Jesus, come to earth, full of light and full of promise, journey by a virgin birth. Shouts of joy bring through the darkness, brilliant stars dispels the night. Living hope has come among us, heralded by angels by. Glory up in his house, Glory up in the highest glory, glory up. 
Shalom, come closer so I can see you. It is all right. I'm glad you came. You are welcome here. Seekers of the Almighty need not be shy in my presence. Have you come for prayer? Good, good. I am pleased to pray, for there is no place better to lift a petition than in this holy temple. I know this place well. I have lived here a very long time since the death of my husband. We were married just seven years. I would tell you that the loss of a husband is no small thing, but the Almighty has been faithful. I have never lacked. This place has been my shelter. Every column has a story. The breath of the Almighty sweeps through and stops to whisper in my ear. I served here before Herod, before the Romans. I am old now, 84 years. I have lived to see much. Civil war, the desecration of the Holy of Holies. I speak my mind, and for this I have been warned. Herod does not take kindly to those willing to speak truth without fear of his retribution. Many who fall under Herod's gaze do not live to see the sun rise. He would like nothing more than to silence me. Poor Herod, tormented by a great, terrible darkness. The weight of his crown does not rest easily on his head. And though he tries, he cannot buy the affection of the people he rules. Know this. The promises of God are not easily thwarted. You may ask this of my old friend Simeon as well. He too has kept this promise that God gave him in his heart all of this time. So, let Herod do what Herod will do. The Almighty has made his promise to us. I, Anna, will live to see the coming of the true King of Israel. The Almighty always keeps his promises.
The crops are some of the best I've had in years. And this year, I have my sons to work. They've grown. Oh, my friend, don't you know that Rome can smell your barley crop in far off Jerusalem? Surely you have heard Roman soldiers grow strong bones on Jewish barley. Yes, don't grow too attached to your barley or your figs, Elias. Rome won't stand aside while you prosper. Mark my words, their taxes will take care of your extra crops. Yes, Rome needs us. How else will the great Herod build his temples and roads? Ask him if he needs another statue or perhaps another theater for his games. I think we know the answer. Herod, <laughs> treacherous snake. Herod, <laughs> he does his bones to the people and thinks he'll win them. He's a monster, not a Jew. Ah, but the temple is such a nice bone. Don't you think, Elias? The splendor is dimmed by the stench of death. The worship of his detestable Roman gods makes me ill. Oh, yes. There is a nice wall around the temple now. A wall that serves to hold jackals inside. The city is a cauldron of anger. Mark my words, Herod's Roman ties will bring more Jewish death. Herod. It's an uneasy peace that he keeps. How long can such a peace that is not really a peace last? Herod, may Herod. the bad fool suffer a pox! Herod, he thinks a building project will buy the favor of a real Jew? It only goes to show you he is not truly one of us. His master is power. There will be no peace for the Jews until him and his Roman cronies are run out of Israel. You sound like one of those rebels, Elias. Perhaps you'll join their cause? They'll get us all killed, that's what. 2,000 revolutionaries crucified and the village of Sepphoris burned to the ground? That ought to be enough to convince you the Romans mean business. I don't like their methods. Yet, if they get the job done for us, you won't see me crying either. It's all birth pangs for the Messiah. Yahweh will not suffer long to see his people treated so. How long then, Jesse? How long? We wait while our lives go from bad to worse. If Messiah decides to come now, who among us would say he came too soon? Joseph, Joseph, join us. We were just discussing taxes. And Herod. <laughs> Herod. <laughs> May a plague of wild pigs invade his dreams. <laughs> Joseph, now that you are betrothed, you have a wife to think about as well. We have heard that uh, Rome will require us to pay taxes in coin. What then of a poor harvest? I don't have to tell you. It's an even greater burden than the one that we carry now. When will it end? When will the Almighty fulfill his promise to us? The Lord made a covenant with us at Sinai. He said that I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, who brought you out of the house of bondage. The Lord will deliver us from bondage once again. The Almighty always keeps his promises. Ah, yes, well spoken, Joseph. But until then, we will discuss which member of the royal family will be the latest victim of the Butcher King, Herod. Herod. <laughs> Joseph, I heard today that Mary left to visit her kinsman. I didn't know she was planning a trip. When do you expect her return? Mm, yes, well, um, well, a last-minute decision, I'm afraid, but... But, uh, well, Mary, Mary will return by harvest. Yes, yes, Mary will return by harvest. She gave me her word. Good, good. Her mother will miss her. Harvest time is no time for a family to be shorthanded. True, very true. But Mary, Mary will return. Mary always keeps her promises. This ancient of days, this one who existed from all eternity, 
whose very breath called into existence the world becomes flesh, conceived in the womb of a virgin. The Word creates another Genesis, bringing morning light into darkness again. This, then, is the creation of something completely new, God as a baby, God as ransom. Emmanuel, the Ancient of Days, newborn.
and Joseph's journey had begun months before in the presence of an angel. Now Mary heard the words in her mind again, his voice echoing in her ears again. Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. The voice sounded like thunder. It sounded like singing. And then her own inexplicable response. I am your servant, your servant. Let it be to me according to your word. Do you know there are moments when things are right, so right that they need no explanation? The fear would come soon enough, but not now. Now, Mary felt joy building inside her like a song. The Lord's Messiah, child of redemption, in her. And somehow, in that growing calm in the center of her soul, she knew that Joseph would come to understand. Joseph had not cried since he had become a man, but now anger, fear, and confusion threatened to overwhelm him, and he was not embarrassed by the tears that came so often and so easily. How could he be expected to trust again? How could this have happened? He wrestled with his response. The weight of this decision pressed in on him until he was exhausted. Finally, merciful, sleep. It was then that the angel came again. So blessed he said. How can I think? How can I pray? How can I trust and not obey? It's so improbable, if not impossible, a child would come to us this way. What will they think? What will they say?
Mary, Mary, here, here, please, give me that, I can do that. Here, Mary, you, please, have a seat. Try to relax. Thank you, Joseph, but only for a short time. I'll be all right. I just need to rest a little bit. I'm so sorry to be putting you through this, Mary. Joseph, nothing takes place without the Lord God's approval. He is turning the whole world upside down. Even Rome bows to his will. And you believe you are the one responsible? This plan of his cannot be that small. Yes, yes, you're right, you're right. Of course you are, Mary. But Mary, even if everything goes smoothly, this is still going to be a very difficult trip. God will give me strength to match my need. Of that I am sure. After all, I am carrying his son. Yes, yes. His son? Joseph? Yes? He's your son, too. God chose you, too. I know, I know. But, Mary, it's just, how am I supposed to know what to do? I mean, I work with these hands, but, but all I do is cut and fashion wood. In fact, I, I cut and fashion the wood that, that he caused to grow out of nothing. I make a stool by, by the light which he placed in the sky. Mary, a, a father is, is meant to teach his son, to teach his son his trade, to teach his son the, the best way to live life. But me? Well, me? I can teach him nothing. Joseph? He will still be a child like other children. Do you really think so? I still wonder, Mary. I, I have to wonder. Why do you think it is that, that we were chosen? I don't know, Joseph. Sometimes I can think of nothing else. Other times I'm just so grateful that it overwhelms me. I think about it every waking moment. Joseph, tell me again your dream. I want to hear it again, exactly as the angel said it. It's still so vivid, Mary. I had just laid my head down to sleep, but, well, I was certain that no sleep would be coming my way, because I was just still in so much anguish. But at least the weight of that most difficult of decisions was, was finally behind me now, and I just needed to get some sleep, because I was just so exhausted. And then... Well, it seemed like but a minute, and I don't know if I was still awake or if I was asleep, but, but then suddenly, the angel, the angel appeared unto me and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Oh, Joseph, can't you see it? No matter what happens, he will not fail us, if we are willing, if we allow him to work out his plan. Mary, if I ever doubted, I can't now. Far too much has happened. I have questions, sure, but doubt? No, no doubt. Truly, he does all things well. Yes, truly he does. My time with Elizabeth and Zachariah gave me courage. When I heard Elizabeth cry out, heard her pronounce, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. When I saw the truth of the angel's pronouncement being carried out in the aged body of my dear aunt, it was enough to quiet my fears. Oh, may he guard and protect them. Should word get back to Herod, the baby would certainly be in danger. Yes, yes, we do live in dangerous times. We live in dangerous times indeed. But nothing is impossible with God. The birth of John is proof enough of that. Mary, in all of my thinking, I've been continually reminded of the covenants of God. The first covenant that God made was with Abraham. Do you remember the teachings, Mary? God told Abraham that through his seed, all nations of the world would be blessed. The birth of Abraham's son Isaac was the first miraculous seal of that covenant. For Abraham's wife, Sarah, was barren. Well, it took years to fulfill, but, but the Almighty, well, the Almighty did not fail. Yes, I remember. Father taught me. But there wasn't just one. No, no, there were four sons of the covenant. 
The second son of the covenant was Moses. Moses survived the massacre of the Hebrew babies and grew up to be strong and, and to eventually lead Israel out of bondage. The third seal of the covenant was the miraculous birth of the prophet Samuel. Samuel's mother, Hannah, was also barren. Barren, that is, until the Lord delivered yet another miracle baby. It was the prophet Samuel who anointed David as king over all of Israel. And it was then that the Lord announced that the son of David would sit on the throne of Israel forever. Oh, I can see his faithfulness, Joseph. Yes, yes. When you look back on it, it all becomes so clear. And now, today, in our very sight, the birth of John, the forerunner of the Messiah, another baby born to yet another barren woman, and this time the barren woman is your very own kinsperson, Elizabeth. Four babies, four sons of the covenant, four seals of the covenant, and now, now, this baby, Jesus, the final redemption from bondage. This baby, our baby, the Messiah. Oh, thank you, Joseph. Thank you. I know without question why God chose you to raise his son. He knew that you would be his protector, as you are already mine. We'll walk this journey together, and he will help us. There are those who instantly and instinctively know that something otherworldly is occurring. Kings from far off lands witness an astonishing sight in the heavens. Shepherds are awakened from a sound sleep and actually come face to face with the miraculous. The world is waiting in solemn stillness, all creation ready to burst with praise. is carried on the gentle winds of the evening. Listen. Be very still and listen. There, off in the distance, the good news of peace on earth. Do you hear what I hear? Oh. 
Royalty in search of royalty. Kings seeking the king. And yes, another journey. These men of wisdom detected something new in the heavens. They soon realized they were witness to a miracle. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy and began the sojourn to the city of David in an audience with the Holy Child. The valleys, it led them each night, a star of most radiant light. The wise men rejoiced as they journeyed apart to behold such a beautiful star. To behold such a beautiful star.
for so long. Today, the promise is fulfilled. The child, may I, may I hold him? The Almighty has kept his word. Now, I can die in peace, just as he has promised. Today, these old eyes have beheld the salvation of the Lord. This child is set as a building stone. He will cause the falling and the rising of many in Israel. The secret thoughts of the people will be revealed. This child is a sign which most will reject. A sword will pierce your heart as well. Simeon! Simeon, he, he is here! He is finally here! I will praise his name forever. He has done wonderful things. He always keeps his promises. On this day, in the sight of us and these people, the Lord God of Israel has done a great and mighty thing. Behold him, your Savior. Tell everyone, tell everyone he is here. The Almighty has kept his promise. He is here. He is here. He has kept his promise.
Lord Jesus, thank you for the gift of peace. Help us to see the world through your eyes. Listen to those in need through your ears. We ask you to give us the protection of heaven and on earth, peace. Now, may the Lord of peace himself grant you his peace, the peace of his kingdom at all times and in all ways, under all circumstances and conditions, whatever comes. The Lord be with you all. Amen. Words are whispered in the heavens, baby Jesus come to earth, full of light and full of promise, journey by a virgin birth. Shepherds running to the manger, sleepless on this starry night, all to greet this royal stranger, awestruck at the Thank you very much for coming out tonight. Just a few brief words before we go. I don't want to overdo it. He didn't come to hear me preach, so at least I don't think he did. <laughs> but um, three of the 12 songs that we sing tonight directly referenced the idea of peace. And in light of all the things going on in our world today, particularly even in our country with wars that we're fighting and a shooting at Chardon High School a few months ago, uh, shooting at a movie theater in Colorado, a shooting at a shopping mall, and on Friday a shooting at an elementary school. Peace sounds like a pretty good idea right now, doesn't it? And while the program tonight references the words of the angel's announcement of Jesus' birth, Jesus himself actually said many things later in his ministry about peace. In Matthew 5, 9, he said that blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons and daughters of God. In Matthew 11, he says, come to me all you who are laboring and are heavy laden and, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you for I am gentle and lonely in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In John, we read that God's peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. I do not give the same way. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. And in John 16, 
I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. For in the world you will have trouble and tribulation, but take heart, for I have overcome the world. So while we all strongly desire peace and certainly wish for it and hope for it and pray for it, a question that kind of has to be asked uh, comes from that second to last song that we sing that says, let peace begin in me. And what are we going to do about it? How are we going to respond to the message that we've heard tonight? And are we going to do what it takes to achieve that? And while we're all just one person, uh, corporately, if we go out and do some things together, we can accomplish much. And so Romans 5.1 is a verse that's important in this regard. It says that we can have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. But it's only possible if we've been justified by faith in Him. And justification is one of those big fancy words that means that we need to be made right with God. You see, Jesus didn't come to bring peace to the world by conquering people or nations or countries or oppressive dictatorships or any other way. He came instead to change hearts and lives, hardened hearts, hearts that sometimes we would give up on as people, lives that are broken and fallen apart, lives that struggle and have challenges. But that's why he came, to give us an opportunity to participate in that peace that he has come to bring, that we could live with him forever, not just in heaven one day, but that we get to be a part of his story right now, right now to share his peace with the world in which we live. And you know, that's an amazing thing when you think about it, that the God of all creation would actually allow us to participate in sharing peace and being purveyors of peace in a world that so desperately needs it. But in about 15 to 20 minutes, the lights will turn off, the room will be emptied, you will go home, some of you will go to a service next Sunday. Some of you may come back to our Christmas Eve service next Monday night. Some of you may come and visit us again. Certainly several of you belong to our church, and we'll see you in the next several weeks and the months ahead. And while attendance at services is wonderful, that isn't exactly what God came for us to do, not just attend church services week in and week out. You see, God wants to change our hearts and our lives and make us into the people he wants us to be. So will our lives, will your life, will my life reflect his peace? Will you merely attend a service on Sunday morning or Good Friday in a few months or Christmas Eve? Or will you become involved in serving God? Attend a service or serve God? Will you say that you are a Christian or will you live like you are a Christian? Will you accept his gift of eternal life? Or, as Simeon said, that many will reject him. And tonight, we all have a choice to make. And while certainly here this evening, more than likely, many of you have already made a statement of faith to Jesus Christ, putting your trust and faith in him, that's not the end of the road. That's not the end of the journey. That's not what life is all about, is just saying, Dear Jesus, come into my life, save me, change me, make me a new person, and take me to heaven when I die or when you come back. All done, good to go. That's not the Christian walk, and that's certainly not the way to help present peace to a world that's so desperate to need it. You know, 70% of people want Christmas to be about Christ, not about any of these other things that we hear about so often. And 80% of people in this country, 80% of people in this country, 8 out of every 10 people in this country say, I am a Christian. Now think about that for a minute. Is what's going on, would that be happening if 8 out of 10 people really was a Christian? I don't think so. But when you begin to dig down, it becomes clear why. Only 10%, only 10% of people in this country believe that absolute moral truth exists that the Bible is totally accurate in everything that it teaches, that Satan is a real person and not just some symbolic force of evil, that a person cannot earn their way to heaven by being good or doing good works, that Jesus Christ lived a completely sinless life while on earth, that God is the all-knowing, 
all-powerful creator of the world who still rules and reigns today, and that you, as someone who claims to be a believer, have a personal responsibility to share the gospel with others. So eight out of ten say they're a Christian, but one out of ten live those basic principles and believe those basic principles. Peace is only possible if we do what we are called to do. And tonight, once again, most of you are friendly with the idea of God. Probably are among many of those who would believe most of the things that I have said. But perhaps tonight you're not, and you're wondering, what's this all about? There are usually two extremes. One, I'm not good enough. Nothing I could do will ever be good enough to save me. You're right, absolutely right. Nothing you can do will ever be good enough to save you. That's why Jesus came so that you wouldn't have to. You see, he came to bring a gift, and we're all familiar with gifts at this time of year, aren't we? Many of us have children or grandchildren. We've certainly seen kids open presents, and the joy and happiness on their face when a gift is given is the reason that we give them. It's for that moment an excitement. Jesus did the same thing. For that moment when you would receive his free gift of salvation to each one. So that's the one extreme that we find, that I'll never be good enough. But the other extreme that we find is that I've done so many horrible things that there's no way God could ever, could ever forgive me. I, I can do good works and earn my way, I'll get there, or I'm such a bad person, such a horrible lost cause that nothing could ever take my place. And that's not true either. Because God did do that. That's the reason he came. He came to seek and to save the lost, to bring his peace to the world in which we live, to change hearts and lives. And this evening, if you're here and you've accepted that gift, that's incredible, and we're so happy for you. And we hope that you are living your life in a way that shares his peace with the world in which we live that so desperately needs it. But if you haven't, we offer you an opportunity to find some people tonight, to talk to us, to ask us questions, to find out what this thing is about to find a way to have peace, not only to share with others, but to have peace in your heart and in your life, that you can go out and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. I do this for that very reason. I'm not anyone special or fancy. Any of these people behind me who work with me regularly will tell you, I'm not normal. <laughs> but I am at the same time. You see, I'm not special either. I'm a person just like everyone else, and I've accepted God's gift of peace into my heart, into my life. And I don't live that perfectly every day. No one does. No one can. But God, in His grace, in His mercy, allows us to have those moments of peace and is at constant work within each of us, producing the fruit that He wants us to have. And so this evening, I thank you for coming. I encourage you, bring friends, come back, see us again. If you're from a neighboring church, thanks for coming and participating tonight with us. It's glad to have you here every year. We're, we're excited about that. If you don't have a church home, come see us again. We do these things occasionally, but we certainly don't do this all the time. There's no way we would survive. It just wouldn't happen. But we enjoy doing them. We enjoy presenting the truth of Jesus Christ and his story, his love for each person. And we pray that tonight that you've experienced that, that you've enjoyed it. We thank you for coming. We ask that God's blessings be poured upon you as a result of being here tonight, that you would experience his peace in the remainder of this Christmas season. And I would ask that you pray with me now. Lord, thank you so much for your gift to each one of us, for coming to save us, to seek us, to find us when we were lost and struggling and hurting and in harm's way. Each person here tonight has something in their life that is not right, something that just they're struggling with. It may be family related, it may be health related, it may be financially related, it may have to do with how they're feeling or a job situation. There are so many things in our world that try to steal our attention away from what really matters. And often we're trying to pursue what we think matters only to discover that it's empty and meaningless and not exactly what was promised. God, may we not be wasting our time. May we be truly spending our time pursuing things that matter to you, things that will last for eternity, things that will last and bring about the peace that we so desperately desire and that you want to bring through us. Lord, we pray for each person here tonight. I thank you for those who have come. I thank you for the hard work of all those here. I thank you for what you have done in our lives and what you continue to do and what you want to do through us all. Allow us to be open Allow us to be willing to listen to you, to read your word, to attend your services, to lift you up in grateful song, in deed, in action, in word, in any way possible, Lord. 
that you may receive all the glory. For that's why we do this, for your glory, for your name, for your praise. I thank you now for this opportunity again. Bless us as we go. Bring us back soon. In the mighty name of Jesus, our Savior, I pray this. Amen. Thank you again. Merry Christmas. If we don't see you soon, Happy New Year as well.